Hey everyone, it's Jolt here. Today I want to introduce to you a new feature in Obsidian Excolitraw called Marker Frames. These are super useful for presentations, print layouts, as well as for referencing parts of images, but they require a bit of explaining. So bear with me, let me walk you through and let's get started. Before we talk about the marker frames, we need to talk about what was already in place in Excolitro, the normal frame tool. So this is here the new option. I'm going to turn off marker frames. And you can see that when I draw a frame, a frame has a solid border while the marker frame has a dashed border and the frame has a rounded corner. The marker frame has a sharp corner so you can see the difference on screen. If you draw a shape in a frame, then if you move the frame, then the shape moves with the item. And indeed, if you change the size of the frame, then the frame is going to clip the image. As well as if you have some existing shapes on your drawing, and you have a new frame on top and you resize the frame, then those items will become part of this frame. And if you already have an item on the screen and you add a new frame, then that is already automatically added to the frame. There are lots of values in creating frames. You can name parts of your image. And of course you can drag items and clip items. Those are great. In turn, marker frames behave differently. So if I draw an object on a marker frame, nothing happens. The marker frame does not capture elements. Also, if I resize the marker frame, it does not capture elements. Marker frames are simply placeholders. And the problem that I was facing, which led to this, was when I created presentations using frames, I wasn't happy because if I create now here a uh, presentation, it will automatically capture the elements that I'm highlighting. And that is sometimes not what I want because it will create uh, clippings, it's going to uh, create a structure that I don't want. My slides, I want only for presentations, the same with a print layout or the same with referencing a part of an image. So I didn't like frames for this purpose and that's why I created the marker frame. Let's go through a couple of use cases of how you can use marker frames. I'm going to delete these from here. So let's first of all look at how do you create a marker frame. You click the frame tool and you select the toggle marker button. And with that, you can create a marker frame. Let me first create a fun little use case here. I'm going to select this part of the screen and I'm going to call it brain like that, if I manage to spell that correctly. And now what I want to show you is if I go to a markdown document, then I can do the following. I can simply reference this document and I can reference the frame that's called brain. And with that, I have the brain right here. So you can see that using the marker frame, I was able to highlight a part of the image that of course is now not intrusive to the image because it didn't clip out a part of the image. And in addition, I have some features here. In particular, I can hide the marker frames altogether. So like this, I have my image, I have my placeholder on it, so I can reference this part in a document, but it's not intrusive on this view. Mind you that even if the marker frame is visible, so you can see here the marker frame is visible, if I come here and embed the entire document here, like that, then maybe this is a bit too small, but let's make this larger. So let's make this uh, maybe this large. You can see that here the marker frame was not exported to the image. 
So that's another feature of marker frames that they do not get exported to images. So you can add these logical placeholders on your image. You can create an image map, but that image map only exists when you view it in Excolit Raw, then you export it to a document or you export it an, as an image, then that is not visible. Now, there are some other use cases with marker frames and let's move on to the next one. So let me show you, in last week's video, I showed you the printable layout wizard. I made some changes. So you probably want to watch the printable layout wizard video anyway to understand how the script works, but then you need to be aware of the changes that I'm going to be talking about today because there are some exciting changes here. So first of all, let me start the printable layout wizard. In last week's video, I explained how you can download it and how you can add it here to the sidebar. Now I'm going to start this and I'm going to first create an A4 page. So I how have no frames here. So I'm going to create a first frame with all the default settings. And with that, I'm going to move this to the side for now. And so, so the idea with the printable uh, layout wizard is that you can explicitly define how you want to export your page. So where you want the page breaks to be. So now, I created my first page like this and you could see that I resized the A4 using the shift key. If I use the shift key to resize an element, then it's going to resize it such that the aspect ratio stays the same. So this is still an A4 aspect ratio. This is going to be bigger than an A4 page, but when you print it with the PDF, application you're using, you can scale it to the page and it's going to look good. But now what I want to show you is how we can now use the page management dialog here and add a page right below this. And here's the one of the new features with the new wizard as well as with the new Excolidraw version that now I can actually add here, click this to rotate the next page and I can add here, for example, you can see now I, I had two landscape pages and now I added a portrait image here and I can add another portrait here or maybe actually instead of another portrait, I'm going to add another landscape page here. So now on this page, I have four pages all together. The first two are landscape, then a portrait, and then another landscape. And now if I click print, I'm not going to use any margin. I can just simply click here to print this. And you can see here that the first is indeed landscape, then landscape, then I have a portrait and another landscape page. So this already is pretty nice because you can have different orientation pages with this. Now, of course, the benefit of creating a print layout like this is you can create a print layout in your template file. I talk about this in last week's video as well. The additional feature I want to show you here is on the, if you have no elements selected on the context menu for the canvas, you can actually hide the frame titles only. And with this, I get a cleaner look. I can also select all of these frames and maybe lock them. And then they are not going to be, I'm first going to group them and I'm going to lock them. And this way, these are not in the way when I'm drawing, but they set the print area for this page. And of course, if you don't want to say the print area, you can even hide the mark, uh, hide the marker frames, and then they are not visible at all. So you have this fine grained control over 
do you want to see the page numbers or not or do you want to see the frames or not and in all of this I highly recommend grouping and locking your page layout in your template so it's not in the way as you're using your drawing but there's more so let me just show you this so now let's move on to create a presentation so with the presentation I'm going to just create with the frame tool with the marker frames turned on I'm going to uh, start to create a couple of um, pages here so this is going to be page one and let's just show the the titles as well so show title frames then I'm going to create uh, maybe page two or slide two here then this is going to be uh, slide three for example and then I'm going to come here to uh, create a slide four like this and maybe I'm going to have uh, this is a slide as a slide five slide six so you can see I'm adding these slides and the huge benefit here is items don't start to get added to the frame so it doesn't create a mess if now I start the uh, slideshow then you can see here that this was my first frame this is my second this is my third this is my fourth this strip was my fifth but of course the screen layout it's going to be centered and then this was my sixth uh, slide so you can see that I can use these to actually create my presentation so that's already good as I talked about it last week and as it works with the slideshow script you can just rename frames and then the sequence is going to change but what I want to show you and I think this is the last bit I want to show you and then there's one more small remark uh, for you to understand how you use this is now if I click on the printable layout wizard I can actually print these pages and the new feature in Xcolid Draw is it's going to follow the frame sizes so you can create a document, a PDF, that has different sized pages. Of course, if this is not what you want, but instead you want to print these to as slides, that also, that's also possible. So here, if I start the slideshow script, not this one, if I start the slideshow script, then here I can print as well, and if I, print my slideshow then it's going to be printed on uh, 16 by 9 pages so you can see here that these are proper slides so you have multiple printout options but this was already available the new thing here is how you can now print different sized pages and this gives you super flexibility in how you can export your Xcolid Raw drawing. The final bit I wanted to show you, and let me just delete all of these frames. If you don't have this script, select elements of type, I recommend downloading it. It's a great tool because this way I could select all the frames and get rid of them. But what I want to show you is if you have a normal frame, so I'm going to draw a traditional frame with elements inside. So you can see this frame contains elements. If I toggle this to become a marker frame, then it will hold on to its elements. I had this dilemma, should it let go of the elements or should it hold on to the elements? I decided that if you change the frame type it could be a mistake and you want to change it back it should actually retain the elements of course at any time you can remove all elements from the frame and from then on your frame moves by itself but this is something to uh, keep in mind i see these three big use cases setting up printable layouts 
referencing parts of images and using it in the slideshow script to mark off the slides without creating frames and of course with the opportunity to once you have your slideshow let's just quickly create this um, slideshow mock-up here uh, like this so you have a slideshow like this um, of course this ruins your image but as we discussed when I export it it's not going to be visible and if I hide the marker frames then they are going to be still there so I can still run my presentation so here you go if I start the presentation of course it's going to present but essentially they are not visible they are not in the way and of course at any time you can bring them back and see them so this makes this overlay for print layouts for presentations for image references I think a much better experience I so hope you enjoy it let me know in the comments and yeah let me know how it goes thank you